we're deep in it. Look at the yeast. This came out. We got some wine. We finally found the perfect pour. Hey, yeah. cheers. cheers, Tom. Cheers, welcome. Tom. Hey, cheers. good to be here, everybody. Cheers, 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 cheers. 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 I don't want to drink this. The only frustrating part about Spanish Point House was that we didn't get to stay there long enough. All right, safe journey, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Spanish Point House, invigorating hospitality there. As a former hotelier, uh, which former, I don't even know if it's former or just once, once a hotelier, once a hotelier always, always a hotelier. Yeah, yeah. Just would recommend TC five star. But we were on our way early that morning to Adair Manor, which is not, uh, such a bad place to be headed. Very Tom Coin vibes. Yeah, the real TC. Who's showing up today? We will He's be already here walked around Ireland once. I didn't think he'd want to do it again. Does he know we got a van? <laughs> My name's Tom Coin, uh, golf writer, golf author. I'm here uh, probably because of a course called Ireland. Uh, it's a book where I basically played every Lynx golf course in Ireland uh, back in 2007 uh, and walked the whole perimeter of the country. And uh, so I got to know golf over here pretty well. So I walked the golf courses, but I walked between the golf courses as well. Uh, the idea of the trip was I was planning a golf trip for my buddies and printed out a golf map of Ireland to sort of decide, okay, here's where we're going to go. And it started to, you know, when I was looking at the map, it just started to look like one giant golf course. What if I just tried to play all of them? You know, what if I tried to play Ireland as one giant golf course? Uh, but the thing about playing golf in Ireland is that you don't take carts. Uh, that you walk over here. So if I was going to play Ireland as a giant golf course, then I was going to actually walk the whole way, not just the courses themselves, but um, between the courses. So some days the next hole was, you know, 10 yards away. And sometimes the next hole was four days away on foot. Inside. Here you'll see the remains of what is left of, of a dear castle that would date back to the 11th century. See here? I hope this is the right place. Sea sweet. We liked Adair. The place was, it was like being whisked away into another universe for, but without being, like it wasn't, it wasn't douchey or like, it, it never felt stuffy at any point. It was just super approachable and like really comfortable, but also like exceptionally classy. I had heard that Adair was supposed to be spectacular and it didn't disappoint. I mean, just the, the grounds um, were so pristine and uh, you could tell you were going to a very nice place. Hello there, how are you doing? I have a group of uh, six here. Yes, you're most welcome. Thank have you. a fantastic time with us. Thank you very much, yeah. appreciate it. When I go to Ireland, I don't want to play inland. That's just the way it is. I can make an exception for a dare manor. I can get it's nice to get away from the sea for a couple of days, away from the wind. I think a golf course like a dare manor in the US is probably gonna be private. I can almost guarantee it's gonna be a private golf course. There's very few places you can go and play a golf course of this quality from a conditioning and layout standpoint and actually pay a green fee up front and the public can get on. Hi there, my name is Alan McDonald. I'm the golf course superintendent here at Adair Manor. Trent Jones Senior, he designed the course. That course opened in 1995, opened to acclaim. It was a fabulous course uh, in its time. Recession came, ownership changed then in January 2015. And the decision then was made course needed revamping, totally rebuild the greens. When that decision was made, we said, okay, what else are we going to look at? We looked at the drainage, we looked at the irrigation, looked at bunkers, and it literally became a complete and utter blow up. They've taken out about two and a half thousand trees out of the front line, and they have um, put in a lot of drainage, about 77,000 meters is worth of drains. It's, it's a question you ask yourself, how would you play if every shot you hit was from a perfect lie? Fairway or rough. Rough, it even sits up a little bit better for you. You can, you will have, it's almost sitting on a tee for you for every single golf shot. I was uh, doing a little ambush marketing out there. Had some NLUTs, so every tee I'd kind of make a drive, maybe sprinkle a couple on the side. Until I, I'm walking down the, um, I think 12 fairway. 
and I look back and my caddy's been picking up those tees. I've never played a round of golf that's like that, and it's just, it's so much fun. The thing reasons, but my personal favorite is the ninth. Um, sorry, that's the Soviet are kicking in the background. <laughs> Can you explain to people what a sub-air system is? It's literally a big vacuum under your greens. We're one of only three courses in this part of the world. It helps to keep them dry, helps to keep them firm, helps to keep them fast. The other side of it as well is that you can switch it into reverse and you can actually pump air back up through your greens as well. There's not a blade of grass out of place. The caddies are going around, filling in every like hint of a divot, every ball mark is repaired, and they I think they even told us it was like six days away from being in really good shape, which I have no idea how a golf course gets in better shape than what we saw it. They got other activities for you, which kind of makes it more of a play, less of a buddy's trip place and more of a place you might take a spouse. Sometimes I feel bad when I go to a really, really cool place and she's not with me. And sometimes I'm just like, all right, she wouldn't get this. It's just about the golf course and all that. This was the opposite of that. This was like this experience as, you know, we're both really into food and beverage and this whole experience was just it's absolutely indescribable. Um, it's got falconry, which I've never done falconry before. I've been a big um, outside fan of falconry. I've never done it. There's some stops in the Middle East on the Euro Tour that get deep in the falconry game. TC, you you've dabbled in a little falconry? I have, I have. And, and this is, yeah, it, it's really cool to be here with the Strap Boys yeah. to, to make this dream come true for them. Uh, give them a little taste of, of what Sally and I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. Look how Tron is living. <laughs> like, is that is that how you got here, TC? <laughs> is that a, a bird of prey right there? visiting Britain. I believe that's a human being. Yeah. <laughs> Liam was great. He, first of all, the name Liam, I mean, it's, it's just such a perfect, he was full of positive energy and really wanted to teach us stuff, but at the same time, was very professional and, you know, wasn't gonna let us, you know, when we weren't supposed to be on the grass, we weren't gonna be on the grass. Got owls, falcons, hawks, and an eagle. You're gonna get to hold just about every single one of them, with the exception of the big guy in the back. That's the one and only bird I won't be handing over to anybody. Now that one is a golden eagle. Um, he's obviously a very large bird and they are an extremely powerful predator. So you just want to be a little bit more cautious with a bird like that. So this is Noddy. And Noddy is a dark breasted barn owl. Hey Noddy. Jump in there. He's panicking. You know, you kind of, all of the things he knew about those birds and the energy that he brought to it, it drew me in for like, I don't know how long we were out there, it was probably an hour, and I was hanging on every single bird he was saying about those birds. So when you're imprinting a bird, the first thing that they see when they open their eyes is gonna be a person. So Nadia here doesn't actually realize that she's a bear now, not in a sense at least anyway. She basically thinks that we're all the same species. So she's probably looking at all of us as if we're big barn owls, or maybe she considers herself to be a little person. Whatever way you want to look at that. <laughs> okay, so the peregrine falcon is the fastest animal on the planet. Um, the fastest one on record was clocked in at 242 miles per hour. So that's 389 what? kilometers per hour. Your boy's got bad speed. He's got gangs. <laughs> gangs would love this guy. <laughs> I got right there, I got it. Oh my god. That, that was, was wild. I had no idea what to expect, and that was about 100 times cooler than I thought it was going to be. It's like yeah. the difference in just being five feet away versus it being on your arm. Yeah. yeah like, sure. I feel like it was like listening to your soul. And there you go, he's showing off here. Yeah, yeah he's, he's <laughs> kind of spooking me a little bit. Yeah, you're all right. How high did I get when they ride the thermal? Uh, it depends on the conditions. I mean, they could go as high as a kilometer up in the air. They could. I've seen them up there a couple of times. <laughs> Do their wings melt? This is is Caelan. Now Caelan is a Scottish Celtic word for warrior, a very appropriate name for a golden eagle because these are an apex predator. They rest quite comfortably at the absolute pinnacle of the food chain. It's always cool to hang out with other apex predators. Now we're going, we're going shooting, hopefully Dick Cheney isn't. <laughs> Come on man, I got, I'm, I'm the only one with experience with the gun. So Liam's dad Willie was the guy at the shooting range when we were shooting clay. Yeah, that's good. That looks good. Yeah, uh, Willie had a just a great dog in the car. Uh, my parents have a black lab, so it, I, I just I'm always taking my labs. Grew up with labs. We use treats all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now he doesn't go until we tell him. 
Ja doch, geh weg. <lacht> Put his head up, have a nice clean delivery. Oh, 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 oh. Well done. Good. Well, well done. done. Well done. Cool. Cool. Well done. Hey. Cool. Is it? Oh, yeah. 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 It's a nice shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a glancing bullet. <laughs> it, was a gl it was a hit. It was a hit. It was not a lethal shot. <laughs> it was it was really, really refreshing to me to see the Strat Boys put their feet up a little bit. People people think they know the Strat Boys. All right. I know you guys have seen the series. There's a whole other side of them. And you're just getting a sliver, just a taste of that in this episode. There's Neil got caviar on, on his pizza. <laughs> These guys are living high on the hog. Sure, he's just getting changed. Yeah. Yeah. Nasdaq Neil. <laughs> Coin has arrived. Hey, what's up in the house? Did you walk here? Yeah, man. Yeah, I did. I walked from the airport, so it took a little while. So I'm, I'm two days behind these guys. So another special thing for me about Adair was it was Tom Coin's uh, first round with us. It's where he met us. I think one of the the coolest things I've done, one of my uh, neatest experiences with no laying up is having the opportunity to not only meet Tom Coyne, one of my favorite authors, uh, but to get to play golf in Ireland with him um, was very special. All right, me, Randy, and Coyne, this was decidedly the group that was not going to hit golf balls, so <laughs> we'll be going off first. All right, first swing off the plane. Uh, Philly uh, to Dublin, three hour drive, four minute lunch. <laughs> To the tee. Oh gosh. That's why he's, he's Ireland's honorary son. So he used to play here whenever we come. The flights used to all come into Shannon. Now they all seem to come into Dublin, but this would be the first stop. You know, you get out at the airport and go change your clothes, have some breakfast and play a dare. And it was great, but that was, you know, 25 years ago. So. Renovation, Tom Fazio, this looks uh, totally different. This turf, the greatest turf I've ever seen on a golf course. Yeah, DJ. Aggressive line. Accidentally aggressive line there. I've never seen that. How does that duck? you never seen that? That's pretty sporty there. Okay, 179, index 7. We don't want to be left. We don't want to be long. We don't want to be right. Yeah, I see that. Some cool holes on the front nine, not quite as distinctive, just more of a a flatter piece of the property. You know, we heard going in that they're probably gonna bring the Ryder Cup there. I think the front nine at the Ryder Cup is not typically what you, you walk away remembering. It's kind of those, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, those holes. And, and I think at Adair Manor, they're gonna shine. So the 2026 Ryder Cup is heading to Adair Manor. Um, a lot of us, you know, competitive golf junkies would love to see when they come to Europe, see it go to a Lynx course. That's just not a reality for a, a modern Ryder Cup. The hospitality that comes with this event is it's massive. It's hard to really grasp how big of an operation this is. You need to fit a lot of fans into it. That's gonna be an all-timer, I think, as far as the setting goes. This place was designed for a Ryder Cup. I'm told that they've got the, the whole place already hardwired with, with fiber, so they don't have to lay any cable or anything. And it is just set up for great viewing, great energy, some exciting risk-reward holes and about as perfect of a match play setup as you're gonna find somewhere in the British Isles. I was fortunate enough to visit Glen Eagles, I was fortunate enough to, to visit Paris. Um, this is a very, very different setup. All right, we're gonna get this documented right now for when the Euros grow this out. This is how short the rough naturally plays out here. So when they grow it up to a foot, I don't wanna hear anymore that that's how the course is designed, okay? Well, that setup sounds good for the Americans. The setup sounds good for the Americans, <laughs> but we can tweak it as well. Fairways can be made narrower, rough can be grown up, and that, that's, that's entirely captain's goal. Yeah. Some of my favorite holes. The ninth hole was one of them. It had a huge lion's mouth bunker in the front, long par five. 
incredibly framed with, with the Adair Manor there in the background playing right towards it. My personal favourite is the ninth. You walk from the putting green to the first and all of a sudden you're just faced with the ninth green and you've got the big undulations and the low cut turf around it and I think it's the first wow you have with Adair. How wide is that fairway just past those bunkers? 75 yards left to right. Yeah. Is this a layup? What's your yardage here? I'm like 270 pins, but can't be long. No, I'm, I'm going for it. Okay. Downwind. Okay. I'm going to hit 245. Loves it. <laughs> I can't believe you're not going to putt this. Yep. See how much real estate that is to cover? That's really good. That was classy. <laughs> the back nine is where it, it things kind of turn into a, a tour de force there after after you make the turn. Oh, what a shot. Yeah, that. Right. A lot of pressure on Randy here. Woo! Thank you. Here we go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Turn around. 12, 13, 14, 15. Like that stretch there where a lot of the matches are going to really kind of hit their stride is, is going to be fantastic. 13 might have been like one of the best holes we played on the whole trip. That was like, that was the closest I've ever gotten to like playing Augusta National. Like, Sally has short-sighted himself. My guy Barry is just, he, he is my shepherd. Uh, he's taking me right. So oh, so that, this goes right, you just want people to know that's where well, you're aiming. It's, it's a little bit of a bailout to start, but that's where I'm going. We're, okay. we're playing the long game. <laughs> Randy's a very good listener. Literally couldn't have bailed out any harder. <laughs> so we're playing um, with our caddies, who, by the way, fantastic caddies. Our caddy goes, you know, he pulls DJ and I aside and says, like, you guys, you really need to take a look at that bathroom. He's almost like whispering to me, like, hey, you gotta go check out that bathroom. You're not gonna believe it. You're not gonna believe that bathroom. And we're like, really? He's like, yes. You just need to go see it for yourself. And so the mind starts, you know, racing. Like, oh my God, what's what's in this bathroom? Is it gold plated? Is it? Because honestly, at a dare manor, like, you know, nothing would surprise me. This place is <laughs> absolutely immaculate. All the money. Hey, wow. wow. Yeah, it's like it's very nice. Marble countertops. And like, it was nice. <laughs> it was, I mean, nice bathroom. Nice on course bathroom. So we kind of had to fake it to our caddy, the restaurant, like, oh my God, that bathroom. That was amazing. Oh, that's beautiful. That belongs in a museum, that was art. The whole back nine is just kind of hit after hit after hit. The 15th is gonna be a heavily emphasized hole uh, when it comes to the Ryder Cup, drivable par four. 15 is gonna be one of the coolest holes in I think the history of the Ryder Cup, uh, especially if they set it up right. They're awesome drivable par four with the whole manor house up the right hand side. It was a little scary for the white be fade. Nobody's ever hit that far right. <laughs> Nobody's ever hit it that far right. Challenge accepted. Padraig oh, Harrington would have had a, a bit of an input or a reasonable input because he was certainly very good friend or he is very good friends with uh, Mr. McManus. So Padraig would have been here a lot during the construction. He had an influence on the 15th. Uh, he wanted a tee at 277. He he knew it was going to be drivable par and drivable par four but he wanted one tee at 277 and he got he got his wish there was a tee at what 277 <laughs> i'm deep red boom baby <laughs> that's two on the green <laughs> Thank you. 
do it. Great putt. Good three. 16, great, great par three over the water. It's like an 80 or 100 yard long green. Be good. Be as good as you look. Come on. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Oh! Gosh, that was a good swing, Randy. Neil hits it with back sway. One to five. <laughs> Just hit four combined in the water, I would much rather be right there. 17 was just like a ball buster. Apparently, Padraig Harrington had some influence on that one and just like wanted it to, to be a, a stern test coming down the stretch. 18th comes right back if hitting a second shot over a really wide creek to another green that sits right there in front of the manor. It's it's like a storybook. It's like playing golf in, in a, like a royal castle. Hey. Uh, assess Randy's game. Uh, brutally honest, Barry. Brutally honest. No, he was good. He came, he course management. He got ten out of ten today. <laughs> that's that's every day. He's a student of the game. Student of the game. Yes. Kind of a student of everything, to be honest. <laughs> And it's going to be awesome to see matches come down to that. As you come towards the manor, it's going to be the background shot for all the matches that come down to that 18th hole. I'm telling you, this is going to be, get your popcorn ready. Seven years, we'll be getting our asses beat over there. <laughs> no, it's very American style. I know, we'll still lose. We lose in Europe every time. I admit, Coin just made an eagle. Chipped in on like the most scenic hole of the trip and I wasn't rolling. That's my fault. Sorry, Tom. But, uh... That was an eagle. Hell yeah, that was yeah. an eagle. Yeah, that was an eagle. That's five more in the pot, too. Bring it! Really sensible okay. five Good to finish five. there, Randy. Good five. Hey, that was really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. thank you. Hope you enjoyed Thank it. you. Jared, that was great, man. Thanks, Christoph. Yeah, Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Great to meet you, Jared. Take care. Great to meet you. Yeah, Danny, great to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Danny, take care. Hey, Dennis, well done. as well always, done. man, well such a pleasure. That was fun, man. That was great. Yeah, what a finish. Yeah, I think my only regret was that you know, we had like the nicest rooms that we've ever stayed at uh, as far as no laying up goes. And, and we maybe spent a, a total of about three hours in them. Just unbelievable. They're the type of accommodations you almost feel like guilty. Like, why, wait, why are, why are they letting us stay um, in a place like this? There's these just beautiful little cottages right by the clubhouse. Oh, oh God, God, how good is that? God, the big guy's gonna journal his balls Ew. off. You know who's gonna like it? You know who's a big journaler? Who? Neil. Neil. Is he really? Mm -hmm. We actually got to sit and relax and kind of enjoy a lot of what Adair Manor actually had to offer. We finally found the perfect pour. Finally, somebody knows how we prefer our Guinness, which is with the logo on the top. That's, you know, we've been asking about that in a lot of places and it's just so hard to find. Uh, I'm kidding, obviously, but like, it's just a, an indicator of like how many stops they pull out at, uh, at a dare manor, just all the stops. All the stops are gone. Hey, yeah. cheers. Tom, welcome. Hey, cheers. good to be here, everybody. Cheers, 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 cheers. 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 I don't want to drink this. It, you know, what really takes the cake then is going into the old, you know, the, the manor house, the, the proper manor. Hey, it's like old school hinge right there. Hinge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's genius. Yo, sway. Yeah, then you get into the actual like manor house. We went down into, uh, this kind of like basement bar, which was just spectacular. It's another place you could hang out and did hang out till way too late in the in the night. Oh, gosh, JP McManus might be the, he might be legitimately the GOAT. He's simultaneously everywhere and involved in everything and kind of has a hand in everything, but his name isn't anywhere, which I think says something about both his humility and probably also like the confidence that he has in his craft and his own tastes. The way that everybody around there talked about him where like it was it was in glowing terms and it was in really personal terms it's his it's his love of the place is why he bought it golf is one of his passions um and he wants the very best for me and my team uh he wants us to present a golf course that is up there with the best in the world so it's sort of the granddaddy of irish links this sort of boom and obsession and love of that americans 
have with Irish Lynx Golf. I think it starts with Bally Bunyan. For me, it was that that name Bally Bunyan held so much weight. The great legend Tom Watson, you know, once said that this was possibly the greatest golf course in the world. So now that I've seen Bally Bunyan, I feel like I understand a lot of other courses better. 